Yo, call me Ocarina of Time, the way I'm gonna go back and stop your birth. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the Game's Cage. Today, and only today, that's right, we are here to talk about the one and only Sonic Unleashed. Now, for those of you that are unaware, I have been replaying every 3D Sonic game, and I finally got to Sonic Unleashed, and I played a lot of it. I played the whole game of Sonic Unleashed, I played the DLC, and I even played Sonic Unleashed. So, I'm pretty well-versed, I want to sit down, give my thoughts on everything all at once. But enough of the rambling, let's start with Sonic Unleashed. So, Sonic Unleashed, of course, a game that is, over time, becoming one of the more beloved games in the series. It's funny, I remember growing up at the time, and people not really liking this game. I remember everybody making fun of the Werehog. I remember just the Werehog was just this laughing stock almost. Um, but over time, it sort of built this reputation. And as more people played it, being like, damn, like this game is actually kind of insane on a budget standpoint, how crazy the CG is, on how the graphics look. I mean, to this day, this game is beautiful. I was playing this on an Xbox Series SX, whatever, where they enhanced it a little bit, make it 60 FPS. And it is a gorgeous video game. I mean, it could deadass have come out today and it would still look incredible. It's especially crazy when you think that this came out after Sonic 06, where it felt like all hope was really lost for Sonic. And then to get something like this to sort of bring the series back to life, I think they did a really good job, you know, with what they had here. And this is a big deal. This is also the beginning of the boost formula for Sonic, right? You had this, this new mechanic, new style of gameplay that truly, and I mean truly, emphasized Sonic speed. I think the other games leading up to Sonic Unleashed had, you know, a good sense of speed. Obviously, Sonic was always fast, right? But this is where it was next level. The whole point of the boost formula is to make it feel like, holy shit, you are going through a roller coaster, right? And while it sort of changed what Sonic levels were for a long time, you I mean, you went away from these more open spaces you got these more i don't know to say like linear levels right where it, it feels more about how you perform and how you react to things as opposed to moment to moment movement right but i think this leads to some incredible level design and set pieces like i said it feels like a roller coaster especially when you're doing the sonic daytime stage i mean think of apato's day that everybody knows to this day you know you're getting these crazy cinematic camera angles you're getting a level where again it rewards rewards you for thinking fast, right? Jumping at the right time, thinking about which right path to take, which left path to take, you know, and then doing levels like Rooftop Run like this, or the New York level, or Jungle Joyride, or Dragon Road, I feel like it just does such an incredible job of giving you a good sense of Sonic's speed and movement through the game. And while sometimes it can be a little frustrating in terms of, you know, having to sort of emphasize replaying the levels over and over to get it right, I still think getting an S rank in Sonic Unleashed is probably the most satisfying in the entire series, bar none. Now, I've gotten ahead of myself a little bit, but let's talk a bit about the gameplay loop of the game. So, the way Sonic Unleashed works is obviously, you know, Sonic gets fucked up in the sky, Eggman turns into a werehog because, you know, the power of Dark Guy that's been unleashed and seals, sealed out, is sealed out, goes into Sonic, Sonic can turn into a werehog. Now, it's all situation, we've talked about it, you land on Earth, you meet this dude named Chip, and the whole idea is to go around the world getting the Chaos Emeralds as you switch between between Sonic the Hedgehog and my boy Sonic the Werehog. And before you get to a certain level in the game, there's gonna be these open area aspects where you sort of walk around a town and talk to civilians. Now, you don't really have to talk to these civilians. A lot of times they're just kind of there to be there, but I do like these environments. I like that Sonic walks a little slower in these areas. It's just kind of you feeling out the world you're in. You know, they are a little small and a little claustrophobic almost, but I, I think it's a nice touch because the whole idea of the game is you're traveling around the world right you're going around the world to different areas different places so you do get to see a little bit of the world obviously you're not getting too much of the culture of it but you do get to see some nice areas you get to see what's cooking around the world of sonic the hedgehog and i still really like how humans are portrayed in sonic unleash i think it's the best game in the series to show how humans are portrayed besides sonic adventure you know you're seeing these civilians that are a little bit more stylized you get some funny dialogue bits with them they evolve over time as you do more stuff in the story they definitely have a good path to them and there's different types of civ civilians in different areas and you get to know how their areas are if you talk to them you then get to these hub areas where you can choose which level you'd like to do you know the sonic levels or the werehog levels now oftentimes you can't do one right away sometimes you'll have to do werehog levels and then sonic levels but we should talk about the werehog because i haven't even gotten into that yet so sonic the werehog the other half of the game that is the most controversial right sonic the werehog 
I think people really do like the Werehog design. I think as a concept, it's really cool. And I felt this time around, because I had replayed this game a few years back when it relaunched on Xbox with the enhancement, and I just didn't vibe with the Werehog. I was ready to be like, you know what? I don't think I just like the Werehog. But honestly, replaying it this time around, being more aware of it, I had a great time with it and i think it's because this time around i sort of looked at the combo list the moves you get every time you leveled up you know i was trying to get upgrades i was replaying the levels to get more level ups i was enjoying the werehog so much more when i actually you know skill checked myself you know when i actually tried to fight the enemies with scale i was doing the special moves i realized that you know you can when you do the quick time event when they have less health it makes it slower for you to able to be doing it easier like i feel like the werehog to me the more i played the more I was like, damn, I'm having a great time with this. In fact, I don't think there was a Werehog level that I really despised in the main game. I actually enjoyed all of them. Even if I had to die once or twice for the most part, if I was able to just, you know, dodge, dodge roll, do my attacks properly and stuff, I was fine. And I enjoyed the platforming. I enjoyed the movement of it. It's great. I do think they could tighten up the controls a little bit. I think the Werehog, when he runs around, is a little too, how do you say it, loose maybe? Like, you can't really run in a circle really fast. He sort of, like, goes on a a big arc so i wish the movement was a little better i hate the balancing mechanic where you have to like balance on these platforms because it's super meticulous there's some stuff that's a little frustrating but even getting high ranks with the where i guess actually a fun challenge to go through you know and finding different paths in the level is also good like i was shocked genuinely at how much more i enjoy and i and i really tell you if you guys maybe replayed the game or if they hopefully poured it Try focusing on the Werehog, you know, try actually doing the combo moves because there's some cool attacks Sonic does. Try doing all the different skills, try learning all the different abilities because I feel like especially by the end of the game, the Werehog is so overpowered and fun that you actually get a really good sense of enjoyment through it. So that's mainly the Werehog loop, but another aspect of the game is these medals, right? You have to collect medals in the game, these sun medals and moon levels. They can be found in Sonic's daytime stages, they can be found in the Werehog stages, and this is what I would say is the biggest flaw of the game, is these medals are required for you to progress through the story and able to get to certain levels, and I wish... Now, in theory, this is fine. I don't mind the idea of getting certain collectibles to go through the game, but I wish the requirement count was a little lower because now, thankfully, I had been aware of the game and I had a chat, you know, telling me, oh yeah, get this one, get this one. And sometimes there's some in the overworld, sometimes they're in Sonic levels. There's a lot of them in the Werehog levels that are easier to find, but some are really obtuse to find. Like some will be hidden like a rock in a corner that you have to turn the camera for. Like some are really obtuse, but I think for the most part, it's fine. I just wish they would just lower it. If they hella lowered the count to find all the medals or they made the level, you know, the medals a little more transparent, I don't think the idea is inherently bad. It's just sometimes, like I said, the requirement is a little too high. The game also has a lot of bosses, you know, throughout Sonic's mode and Werehog mode. And I think for the most part, the bosses are pretty fun. I think Sonic's are a little lame because it ends up just being you're running after beetle Eggman, you know for an extended period of time then you're just kind of dodging until you hit him uh but you know the challenging of the platform is fun and the werehog bosses are never really frustrated there's only one that was kind of annoying which is like when we have to push a box through a whole area but for the most part the bosses were fun they were rewarding they were kind of cinematic and just music wise was fire and oh my god i didn't even get to the to the music of unleash holy shit this game immaculate music i mean we are seeing some of otani's best work over here where every Everything is stylized, right? You're going to different towns and each town has their own theming of it and, and how they represent the area they're from. Like when you go to Spagonia, it has that, you know, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm correct, but it has a bit of like that Italian feel. You know, when you go to uh, Apotos, you have the, the Greek feel. When you go to Arid Sands, you have a bit of that Arab feel. Like there's a lot of cool thematic music stuff. And the fact that every level and area has a daytime song variation, a nighttime song variation, it just makes the soundtrack so much more engaging. In fact, like Sonic's daytime levels are always so high energy and the Werehog ones are a little more like chill. They're vibey, they're chill. Obviously, you have the Werehog battle theme, which is ingrained in people's souls to this day as, as a nightmare track. But for the most part, I think music-wise, they did such an incredible job at giving an atmosphere and a vibe and feeling like a big band and orchestra was playing through. And I, and I couldn't be more thankful for that soundtrack. And of course, let's talk about the story because it's one of the last games in the series after, after Black Knight, I think, after this where the story is a main focus. And honestly, 
say the story of this game is a little weird for me. I know a lot of people really like it, and, and I like it thematically. I like Chip as a character. You know, he's, he's a guardian that you basically freed essential uh, technically eggman freedom because he was sealed away for a long time but basically you and chip are traveling around the world to stop dark guy and i think while in principle there are cool moments between sonic and chip like you know the iconic ice cream scene between them or the shorts you see on youtube i think in game there isn't really much between them throughout there's a lot of times where there's just no story for a big chunk of the game and when there is story you kind of just put an emerald uh in a place and then you leave the area and the story's got a back end ended for a lot of the game now again granted it's a platformer and i want the platforming to be emphasized but i do wish we had gone a lot more moments between sonic and chip or even those moments that we've seen outside of the game like you know the werehog short or even you know those little animatrix i wish those were in the game to sort of sort of show how their relationship as friends was developing throughout the game but it is cool that in this game eggman does make eggman land uh, eggman does fuck up the world like he essentially does win right and it's really cool to see how evil he is throughout it but you kind of stop him really quickly and as always it ends up being about the big bad which is dark guy and obviously I, I do have to talk about Eggman Land I can't be talking about Sonic Unleashed without talking about Eggman Land what a level man honestly replaying this this time around I was uh, I was supposed to get an S rank on my stream so I made it a little more difficult on myself but once I did learn it and I understood what you had to do really not that bad there is really one awful area as the werehog there's this area where you have to balance on a bunch of the platforms and it feels like shit it's, it's just completely awful but for the most part I think Eggman Land was actually much better than I remembered it and I had a pretty good time and like I said this game continues to surprise me the more I've replayed it over the years where damn I really love so much about this game and I, and I think thinking about it the game is fantastic i i really do love sonic unleashed i think it's one of the most fun games in the series it has the most replay value of most of the sonic games it has a ton to do the music is fantastic the theming is great like i said besides besides for me where story takes a back end everything about it is fantastic even towards the presentation of the finale right i love how you know you fight as chip towards the end you're sonic running towards dark guy and then you get the supersonic moment which the supersonic fight is not the greatest you're kind of just hitting eyes and you're not really hitting the enemy and feeling powerful like super Sonic. but god the music the final tracks in there everything just immaculate vibes throughout i i think sonic unleash is a game that over time you know things happen and go go on i love it so much more and there's a reason you see all those posts online being like does anybody love unleash because i think people love this game really and i, and I feel like this game with an enhanced port could be easily re-reviewed in Immaculate. I mean, I'm telling you, they tightened up the warehouse controls. They gave you maybe more combat combos off rip. They gave you, you no know, better combat music for the werehog they let the le le the metal count lower a bit i think you have a game that is pretty pretty much immaculate but did you know sonic unleash had a bunch of dlc in fact every area of the game had a dlc pack and i played them and what the fuck was going on here what were they thinking so this is a part of the game no one ever talks about because like i feel like no one even knows it existed it's basically kaizo sonic and i'm not exaggerating these levels are brutal i'm about levels where the the floor is lava essentially there are spikes everywhere you're getting one shotted really quickly you it's like it is meant to test your skill but god some of them are just frustrating and and it's so and i didn't want it to affect how i felt about the game so i, I made sure to play them god dude if, if those dlc levels were part of the main game i would have hated this game because these levels are brutal even the werehog levels the bosses have more health they're more frustrating there's some of the most meanest enemy fights you could have in the game god well, i don't know what they were thinking with this and i i don't mind the idea of a difficult sonic pack but geez some of these were like brutal it wasn't even fun and i think that's the biggest problem is there's always a balance between all right let's make something difficult versus let's make something frustrating and these dlc levels felt frustrating as hell you know but for the most part i was able to get through them i would not recommend them at all in fact i would not at all play them if, unless you wanted to dislike the game more again I, i've disconnected from that time but i really 
I don't like those levels at all. I would not play them. And also, this game has another version, and it is Sonic Unleashed for the Wii. Now, this is actually the version of the game I grew up with. So when a lot of people were hyping up Sonic Unleashed, I was like, I don't really get it, because I kind of played this version. It was, and it was pretty great, but it wasn't crazy. But it is insane how different Sonic Unleashed on the Wii is compared to uh, the PlayStation. In fact, this is technically the Wii and PS2 version of the game, where the graphics are much more downscaled, extremely uh, to a point, and the gameplay is very differently structured. So the way Sonic Unleashed works is... It's it's the same story, it's the same story, it's the same technically areas and everything, but a lot is different. The level design is basically completely different. In fact, the level structure is different. The levels are segmented. So instead of one big werehog level, you get like five really short ones, which I don't know if I really like, because I feel like it's just kind of this arbitrary, you know, stopping point of the levels. But in some way, I guess you could take more breaks with the game. I guess maybe that's the idea. And even the Sonic levels, right? You're getting these levels where, you know, you're, you're going through the main one. Then the next one's going to be a ring challenge, a don't break the pot challenge, or get this certain amount of coin challenge, a time attack challenge. Like you're getting these smaller challenges through it. And I, I don't mind it, like I said, in concept, but I feel like it can leave you wanting more, right? Especially when a lot of the, honestly, the daytime stages are really good in fact you have to sort of mean manage your boost in this version of the game where you only have a certain amount of boost depending on how many rings you get as opposed to holding the boost continuously so the gameplay change is pretty significant there and a big downgrade here is instead of the open areas you walk around you sort of visual novel talking to the different characters like you'll just tap a part of the town and you'll get a png of the character that you're talking about and i'm like okay this is just boring and i'm just kind of skipping dialogue here because none of the stuff they're saying is really interesting uh so i think in the open world aspect of the game that's worse but for the most part everything is mainly the same like i said the level structure is completely different obviously that's a big factor of a platformer but i do think it's fun i i don't think at all it's a superior version i've seen some people say they like it more but i don't know about that you know the good thing about the game though is it doesn't have a metal count uh so you can just play the levels to your heart content i mean they have medals but they're optional they are for optional lives also the way lives work in this game are weird. You have to open gates to go get more lives. You can't get more than five. Otherwise, it's it's really it's a really weird version of the game. It's good. I had a good time playing it, but I sort of felt nothing playing it. In fact, I thought Eggman Land in this version was worse because, again, you do these short levels instead of, like, this one big challenge platforming level. And I don't know. I, I felt like the game sort of forced itself to be longer. It, it's weird. I, it was kind of designed for the PS2 and Wii. The final boss is also completely different. I mean, it's still Dark God and you still do so but you do this punch out segment with chip instead of doing you know the thing where you're running towards dark gaia you get to do another sonic segment where you're running through which is the same but the super sonic fight mainly plays as a dodging game and then you have to hit the eye at the right time like it's a little more engaged i actually think i like the super sonic fight here more but like i said music wise it's pretty much the same and style wise it is the same but yeah, that's the extent of Sonic Unleashed for me. Like I said, it's it's a game that I really have fallen in love with as I've gone over time. You know, whether it's the daytime levels, how thrilling they are and how roller coaster ride they feel, whether it's the just the introduction of the boost formula, whether it's just the heartfelt story, even if it's not all there, there's a heart to the story and Sonic's character. I, I feel like so much about Sonic Unleashed is so lovable and so big budget. You know, especially like I said, when you play on the main version of it, it feels like the last major your budget game because i think it looks better than any other sonic game really i truly do i think immaculate graphics to the game it looks fantastic and i hope we get to a point where sonic team now has the budget to make a game that looks that good and stylize it for modern sonic games because i think so much of the game is so well designed it's so fun it's so gonna just i would love to see them port this game and i would love to see the insane budget of this game translate to the modern games but yeah that's sonic unleashed revisit guys let me know what you all think of the game and make sure it's up to your boys support the content and of course i'll see you all for sonic and the black knight peace out